<laughs> it's you. I've been expecting you. You see, I know you. Well, I, I know your, your great grandfathers and mothers and well, maybe your great, great and another great grandfathers and mothers. <laughs> We've been watching you, you know. Yeah? You see, you've come to learn about one of your ancestors, uh, one of your friends, and my friend, Robert Gardner Jr., <laughs> a fellow Scot. <laughs> you see, I know Robert Gardner. Oh, how was that, you see? Well, look, see, I have here his journal, his very words. Now this is how you can come to know him better. What a grand legacy. But this is his story, but you know, it's your story too. He wrote these words for you. Huh. Here's a little taste. Ah, I was born on the 12th of October, 1819, 1819 in Kilsith, Stirlingshire, Scotland. My father immigrated to Canada, I think in the year 1821 or 22. Three weeks was all the time I ever went to school, which has been the chief lament of my life. I was grown to quite a boy, and father needed my work on the farm. My lack of education made me feel awkward in society. It made me prefer back seats to front ones, lest I might expose my ignorance. I will here say to my children to educate their children, if it was only common book learning that they need to use every day of their life, even if they have to do without some of the things or the fashions that are outside of the kingdom of God. I think it was about 1844, the Gospel of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was brought to our neighbourhood. I had read the Old and New Testament a good deal before. I had no trouble in believing the Book of Mormon, for I had a burning testimony in my bosom every time I took the book and after reading it. My brother William baptised me while under the water Though only about a second, it seemed to me a minute, a bright light shone around my head, and the light had a very mild heat with it. I cannot describe the feelings that I had at the time, but I felt like a little child, and was very careful what I said or thought, lest I might offend my father in heaven. Like he said of that time that scripture study and secret prayer occupied all his leisure time. Now, Robert had married his first wife, Jane McCune, by this time. They had four children. Now, the small branch of saints in that part of Canada had decided to emigrate with the saints to the west. Well, the family and the small branch made the long trek to Nauvoo and then on to winter quarters, Nebraska. There was much sickness. Robert describes many of the men with black leg, the scurvy, making he and his brother Archibald to carry a heavy load in the winter of 1846-47 in winter quarters, said Robert. It seemed hard times. There was no one to blame. Men were so scarce and so many sick and dying that I have had to go and help the sexton to bury the dead. Yet the authorities kept up their meetings and now and then have a dance to keep up the spirits of the people. The family departed from Nebraska on the 17th of June, 1847, with the John Taylor Company comprised of 198 people. Robert was sick most all of the trail with the ague, or the fever and shivers you call malaria. While the company stopped to fix a bridge, tragedy struck the gardeners. My oldest boy, Robert Ryerson, stepped down off the tongue of the wagon. The oxen kicked, throwing him under the wheel, and then started up the wagon, running both wheels over his bowels. 
I had to drive my team all day and sit and hold him all night and see him suffer all the time. We buried him on the bank of the North Platte River. He was about five and a half years old. There were many other hardships, but the company arrived in the Salt Lake Valley on October the 1st, 1847. The next spring, Robert built the first sawmill and the second gristmill on what's still called Mill Creek to your day. The house he built in 1848 next to Mill Creek is the earliest known adobe structure in Utah. It still stands today, with lumber he cut himself. The house is the oldest standing home in Utah still in its original location, now fully preserved and renovated. Some time later, when, as he put it, I was in comfortable circumstances, the water from his property, well, it was diverted from Mill Creek. Well, this event shut down Robert's sawmill that caused his crops to fail and, and the loss of his cattle. Now, in the midst of all of this, he was called to go on a mission to Canada. <laughs> well, the winter before he left, he suffered a serious accident when a sliding log cut his lower leg to the bone. His first thought was, when I looked down and seen the blood and flesh, the first thought was, will this prevent my going on my mission? So I took hold of my leg with both hands and raised it up and found my leg was not broke. I thought, all right, I will be able to go on my mission. Now the cut was so bad that even famed hardy frontiersman Porter Rockwell got faint at the sight and Robert, <laughs> he had to sew up his own leg wound himself. <laughs> well, that was Robert. Yeah. Courageous, faithful and loyal. <laughs> he did go on that mission. He left with 75 other missionaries pushing handcarts to Missouri. As Robert put it, Going forth with no money or scrip, only enough to pay our way to our fields of labour that was furnished from our own purses. I know mine was, for I sold my last yoke of oxen to get it. Such was the character of Robert Gardner Jr. Ha! <laughs> oh, there's so much more. <laughs> Robert eventually married three additional wives, Cynthia Lovina Berry, Mary Ann Carr, and Leonora Cannon. In all, he had 37 children. 26 lived to adulthood. Now, at another time, when things were going pretty well, Robert had heard that his name had been called at a meeting at the Tabernacle for serving another mission to settle the St. George area of Utah. Now, <clears throat> he records, We were to start right away. I looked and spit. <laughs> ah, took off my hat and scratched. Thought and said, All right. <laughs> but don't you just love that? <laughs> I mean, that was back in October of 1861. He spent the rest of his life in southern Utah. He cut and pounded in the cedar stake from which the city of St. George was laid out. He was their second mayor. He served three times as a bishop, also in a stake presidency, then later was ordained a patriarch. While serving in Pine Valley, he even helped find and cut some of the lumber used to build the pipes of the tabernacle organ in Salt Lake City. He was asked by George A. Smith to go on another mission. <laughs> to a remote spot to supply lumber for the St. George Temple. Wow. When asked what he thought, he said, Brother Smith, if I were to study my own feelings, I'd rather go on a mission to China than go out there. But I have nothing to say. If you want me to go there, I will go and do the best I can. The 
Such is the legacy of Robert Gardner Jr., a man of great loyalty, great faith, and exalted labor. Here, he's speaking to you, his descendants. What would he have you know about him? I wish them to profit by what I have suffered. Hard work and a willingness to meet it and to live in peace with my neighbors, I think have been the leading features of my life. <laughs> Everyone has a story. Make Robert Gardner's legacy a part of your story too. <laughs>